Hello everyone. Welcome to the second lecture of Strength of Materials. I am going to start with the next topic, Simple Stresses and Strains. This is the basic course of Strength of Materials and this is the most fundamental chapter which needs to be studied. So let's start. These are the contents that I am going to discuss in this lecture. Classification of loads, what is pressure, what is stress, what is the difference between pressure and stress, types of stresses, what is strain, what are the types of strains, what is Hooke's law, what are elastic constants. So we will start with the first topic that is classification of loads. There are various ways of classifying loads. In the first type, I am showing you four types of loads which are mainly present in the nature. The first one is called as dead load. Dead loads are permanent or stationary loads which are transferred to the structure throughout the lifespan. Dead load is primarily due to the self-weight of structural members. It could be because of permanent partition walls, fixed permanent equipments and weights of different materials. Let's take some example. Say you go to a particular lab. Machines in the lab will be a type of dead load. They are in the fourth category that is equipments and weights of different materials. Roofs, beams, walls, columns. These are some type of structural members. So because of their self weight, there will be a constant dead load coming on the structure wherein they are existing. There can be some kind of partition walls. For example, there is a wall between two classrooms or there is a wall of the structure. So these kind of walls are also going to add to the weight of the structure. So that is called as a dead load. These are called as dead load because these are something which are going to remain forever and permanently. The next type is called as life or fluctuating load. The load which is exerted and removed intermittently, which means uh, in a particular span of time. For example, the students enter the college building in the morning and they leave in the evening. So when they enter the building in the morning, the weight of the building increases. The load on the building is going to be more. And in the evening, when the students leave the college, the weight on the building reduces. So this kind of load is called as a live load or fluctuating load. Live in the sense they are not permanent, they will come and go. And it is also called as fluctuating because of the same reason. The third type is called as inertia loads or forces. Objects want to stay in rest or motion unless an outside force causes a change. This is the basic definition of inertia. For example, an inertia load of a motor or engine is one where the load has inertia and the main goal for applying the force is to accelerate it. The load of the machine is nothing but the inertia and the force which you apply to drive the body ahead is nothing but the inertial forces. They are the forces used to accelerate the body. The fourth type is called as centrifugal loads or forces. In Newtonian mechanics, the centrifugal force is an inertial force that appears to act on all objects when viewed in a rotating frame of reference. So when you have a particular object which is rotating, so in a rotating frame, the force which acts on the body is nothing but the centrifugal force which is in the outward direction. I'll give you an example that is passengers when they sit in a car and the car is taking a turn, they feel as if they are pushed outwards. So this is a kind of centrifugal load or forces which come on body. These are some more types of loads. This is another way of classifying. The first one which you see over here is called as a tensile loading. You can see from both the sides the body is being pulled. It is called as a tensile effect. When the body is pushed from both the ends, it is called as a compressive loading. When the body is subjected to a force in opposite direction, you can see in the top portion it is moving towards the right. At the bottom portion, the force is moving towards the left. So this force which is acting at a particular instant of time at the top and the bottom portion and in two opposite direction is called as a shear effect. The fourth one is a torque loading. The body over here is fixed from one end and from the other end you can rotate the body say in anti-clockwise 
or maybe in clockwise direction so that is called as torque effect and it is called as a torque loading the fifth one is an example of bending moment load say your body is fixed on one end and from the other end the body is bent like this because of a particular load so that is called as a bending moment or loading say if you have a force also over here acting in the compressive direction and here it is fixed if this body is too long it will bend something like this from the center so that is also called as a bending effect that is a special type of bending it's called as buckling in columns as of now these are the five types of forces or loading which is possible another classification of loading there are two types point load and distributed load point of concentrated load is going to act at a particular point like you can see p over here this force is acting at a particular point this is the beam whose length is l and it has two supports from the two ends so they are also called as a knife edge contact and hence they are undesirable because if at a point you have a lot of load coming into picture then over there at that point there can be more chances of failure so point load is something which is not preferable the next type is distributed load distributed load has two types the first one is called as uniformly distributed load or udl it is also called as rectangular load the second type of distributed load is called as uniformly varying load uvl or it is called as triangular load uniformly distributed load you can see over here is uniformly applied on the body it is called as rectangular load because of the shape the length of the beam again is l one side you can see over here is hinge one side there is a roller shown and this is the load which is acting of intensity q for uvl this is the beam one side is hinged one side is roller the length is l and here you can see the value of loading or the intensity of loading is continuously changing from 0 to w it is going to increase next we will go to the topic what is pressure pressure is defined as force per unit area it is indicated by the symbol small p mathematically pressure can be written as force upon area so force is indicated by capital f and area is indicated by capital a there are various units of pressure one of the common units is newton per meter square which is also called as pascal which is the name of a mathematician or a physicist or newton per mm square which becomes mega pascal or kilonewton per mm square or kilonewton per meter square bar is another unit of pressure so these are various units of pressure which is used next we'll go to the topic what is stress stress is defined as resisting force per unit area if you observe carefully pressure and stress has the same kind of definition both are talking about the same term force per unit area the only difference is in pressure it is the actual load which you apply per unit area and stress is the resistance which is shown by the body for example you have a particular beam on which you apply some load so when i apply load and area is given by the beam obviously so load upon area is the pressure which is exerted on the beam the beam will start deforming under the effect of pressure if it is more than the capability of the beam to bear the load but the beam will always try to resist the deformation and it will always try to come back to its original shape and size when the force is removed also if it is not able to come back to its original shape and size it will try to resist the force which is exerted on the body in universe every object which you see wants to stay or want to remain in its original form and so they want to come back to its original shape and size that is the elastic property of every material but obviously elasticity also has its limit after some time the material may lose its elasticity so coming back to the point on any object if you apply load what you exactly apply is pressure the object resist change on it because of the application of pressure so that is called as stress generally we all say that we are stressed because of the situation this is a very common term which is used but actually any situation or any problem 
can exert some amount of load on you which means it can exert some amount of pressure technically speaking what is stress is the resistance that we develop towards the situation so the colloquial use of the term stress is actually not very apt in many places and that is why here it should not be misinterpreted because stress is not the force upon area it is the resisting force upon area by the body it is not because of the situation it is because of the material and its property and also in human beings if we talk in the sense that was just a light example it is indicated by the symbol sigma mathematically stress can be written as force exerted upon area here i have used the symbol p because in strength of material i am going to use p for load or force the unit of stress is newton per meter square newton per mm square kilonewton per mm square or kilonewton per meter square like pressure the unit is same the quantities in ratio are also the same the only difference is of the type of force whether you apply the force it becomes pressure when the object starts resisting to that pressure it is called as stress these are some conversions which are very important and need to be remembered because in solving the numericals of strength of material this is very much required 1 kilopascal is 10 raised to 3 pascal 1 megapascal is 10 raised to 6 pascal 1 gigapascal is 10 raised to 9 pascal next is the difference between pressure and stress i have already told you just let's read once pressure is force per unit area and stress is resisting force per unit area pressure is applied on the body and stress is generated by the material of the body very very important term for calculating pressure area is always cross sectional area while for stress area can be cross sectional or parallel to the direction of application of force this is very important for example if you have a beam when you apply force on it the area is the surface on which the load is being applied so that is the perpendicular area so that is what i mean by cross sectional area in stress there can be two types we can talk about direct stress on the body which is of tensile and compressive type which i have shown you some time back on the body those are perpendicular forces to the area there is another type which i showed you which was of shear force we'll just go back to the slide you can see over here this is tensile loading and this is compressive loading this will be creating stresses which will be called as tensile stress and compressive stress and this kind of loading will create a shear kind of stress so this is not something which is pressure this is pressure compressive loading and in that also from one end when you apply that becomes pressure there is no both side loading for pressure so this is pressure one side loading being added so that's about this slide we will go to the next topic now types of stresses as i just told you there are two main types of stresses the first one is called as direct or simple stress in that the first one is compressive stress as i just showed you when the forces are applying from both the ends to compress the body it will be leading to a compressive stress load is called as compressive load and the stress is called as compressive stress compressive stress is the result of actually loaded forces which are pointing towards the center of a body this is something which is self explanatory because i've just shown you the diagram there are two major issues with compressive stress this compressive stress can lead to two kind of effects one is shortening of the height for example the two ends are applied with compression stress in that case the body will compress in height and the other effect is called as buckling which means from one end if you assume that it is fixed and from the other end say some compressive load is being applied if the object on which the compressive load is applied is too long in that case rather than getting shortened in height what will happen is the body will actually bend 
vertical bending will happen in the object so that is also called as buckling effect we will see that in further chapters next comes tensile stress it is also called as tension stress it is caused when actually loaded forces are pulling away from an object center which was very self explanatory again you have seen the arrows which were away from the center of the body and it is perpendicular to the object's surface because we are talking about direct stress tension stress can cause lengthening of an object which means the length of the body will increase sigma t sigma is the symbol used for stress as we have seen so sigma t t means tension is equal to p t upon a t is tension and p is force so p t upon a a is going to be cross sectional area in both these stresses the third type of stress is shear stress is caused when the forces applied to an object are parallel to the object's cross section so when the force is applied in the direction which is parallel to the cross section it will lead to shear stresses as i've just shown you the stress can cause the object to deform and in some cases pull apart which means from both the ends when you start causing a force or you can say there's a sliding effect so the body can actually shear apart as the object deforms it changes the shape of the object can change which can affect how the object withstands other forces so in that case if you have some other type of forces acting on the body it will show some combined kind of effect tau s is equal to ps upon a tau is the symbol used for shear stress s is stress and tau is shear so shear stress p is again force s is shear a is area just mark that the area over here is going to be parallel these were the three types of stresses under direct stresses next type is called as indirect stress in that the first type is bending stress bending stress is seen in longitudinally loaded objects everyone is aware of a beam so in a beam you can see a bending stress which is exerted because it is along the length longitudinally means length the forces cause the object to bend usually in a downward direction the further away from the object specs supports the greater the bending stress generally the bending stress is always more towards the center or closer to the center of the beam and it is very much less or you can say it is zero at the support when it is supported at those points the body cannot move in the y direction so when you are applying some load the body will bend along the y direction at the center so that is called as bending stress this is the formula sigma b is m y upon i where m stands for moment which is force into distance y stands for the distance at which you are calculating the bending stress we will discuss about this little later i is called as moment of inertia and sigma b is the symbol used for bending stress sigma is stress b stands for bending and the second type of indirect stress is called as torsional stress torsional stress is something which you apply on a cloth when you want to remove water from the cloth what you do is you hold it in one hand and with the other hand you twist it so that is called as a torsional kind of effect so you can just see the formula here tau s is equal to t into r upon j t here stands for torque which is again force into distance r stands for the radius at which you are applying the torque j is called as polar moment of inertia i'll be discussing this in the further chapters you can take an example of the shaft of the fan in your room as well from one end it is fixed and from the other end the fan is rotating so when it is rotating it is also applying a torque from the other end so this is an example of torsional stress being applied third one is a combination effect of the stresses which you have seen it is called as combined stresses combination of more than one stress is called as combined stresses so we will be discussing a complete chapter based on combined stresses here you can see the examples again this is compression from both sides i'm applying the force you can see it is towards the center of the body as we have discussed in tension the force is applied away from the center of the body shear is 
applied like this when you have two forces in opposite direction pulling this body in two different directions you can see over here the force and the area are parallel to each other here you can see the force and the area are perpendicular these three are direct stresses next is torsion you can see over here say if one end is fixed and you apply a torque that is also torsion effect or you can say from both the ends you are applying opposite direction of torque so that leads to torsion effect the last one is bending you can see from two sides there are two supports along the length and you are applying some force at a particular distance so this object is bound to bend so that is called as bending stress so these are some types of stresses you can see some more pictures of tension stress compression stress and shear stress over here you can see when i have a tension effect the body will increase in length and suppose if it is not able to resist as i told you stress is resisting force so when force applied is much more than what the body can sustain and come back to its original shape size it's fair enough but when it cannot come back to its original shape and size and it yields at that time there will be a breaking of the sort this is compression stress there will be a shortening of length but when it is too much of shortening at that time there will be a breaking the third type over here is shear stress the body is actually pushed into different directions so at the center you can see there is a shearing effect next we'll talk about what is strain it is defined as a ratio of change in dimension to the original dimension as we have just seen stress the effect of stress is going to be strain so when there is increase in length or decrease in length we say there is strain in the body it is indicated by very many symbols the two prominent ones are small e of english or epsilon which is there for greek symbol mathematically strain can be written as small e is equal to delta l upon l l here stands for length so as i've written in the definition that it is a change in dimension say the dimension is length so i can say it is change in length upon original length now this change in length can be of two types it could be either increase or it could be decrease strain has no unit this is very important because both the quantities that is in numerator and denominator have the same quantity length upon length the units get cancelled out and strain has no unit next we'll talk about the types of strains strain in mechanics are of three types majorly first one is called as normal strain normal strain are of two types further one is called as lateral strain and second one is called as longitudinal strain the second type of strain is shear strain and the third type of strain is called as volumetric strain now we'll see each one of them normal strain the deformations that are applied perpendicular to the cross section are normal strains the first type of normal strain is the longitudinal or linear strain the strain along the length of the body is called as longitudinal or linear strain the strain along the other two dimensions say if you talk about a rectangle then along the length becomes longitudinal then the breadth and the thickness of the rectangle can be considered in lateral strain so if a rectangle has a tensile kind of effect then you will see that the length of the rectangle increases obviously the length of the rectangle increase means there will be no change in weight which means no extra material is added so when the length increases the breadth and the thickness compensate by reducing so you can say that there will be a lateral decrease in breadth and thickness and there will be an increase along the longitudinal axis so that is all about normal strain then we will talk about tensile strain ratio of increase in length to the original length of the body is called as tensile strain this is the formula for tensile strain et e stands for strain t stands for tensile is equal to final length minus original length upon original length of the body when i talk about tensile strain i have to talk about compressive strain it is a ratio of decrease in length to the original length of the body 
So when I have to write the formula, it will be EC. E is strain, C stands for compression, is equal to original length minus final length upon original length. The reason why we are taking original minus final because in compression, the final length is going to decrease. So I want the ratio to be positive. So I have taken the higher minus lower value in both the cases. And the denominator is always going to be original length. Next, I'll talk about volumetric strain. Since there is a change in length, breadth, thickness of a rectangle, obviously there will be a change in volume. It doesn't mean that mass is going to get changed. It only means that volume is going to change. The way the body was occupying space and the way it is occupying space now is going to be different. That is the meaning of volumetric change. So that is what I'm talking about when I say volumetric strain. So it is a rate of change of volume to the original volume. So the formula is EV. E stands for strain. V stands for volume is equal to delta is change. So change in volume upon original volume. You can see in the figure here, this is a rectangular body. Here there are forces applied from all the three directions. So the initial volume was V1 which was larger will now turn to V2 which is smaller because we are applying a compressive kind of force. So volumetric strain will take the formula V1 minus V2 upon V1 with a change in volume upon original volume. I want to keep the formula positive hence I am going to take the larger value minus smaller value divided by the original value of volume. Next is shear strain. It occurs when the force acts parallel to the surface of body. This we have repeated many times. It can be defined as a ratio of deformation to the original length which is perpendicular to the plane of force application. We will see this diagram to the right. LPNM. This is the original block. Say a force F is applied at the top layer. When you apply a force to the top layer, Say Mn shifts by delta L to Mn dash and it is also changing by an angle phi. The reason is all these layers are going to shift so we can get a complete change in this Lm to Lm dash and Np will change to Np dash. The height h is going to remain the same. So here when I say change in length upon original length, here the change is in delta L upon height. Okay, This formula also comes from the usage of the term tan of an angle. Tan phi if I take it is going to be opposite upon adjacent. So if you see in this one phi tan phi opposite is delta L and adjacent is H. So this is a formula actually of tan phi and this shift of layers and this angle theta will actually be very very small. So when tan phi has phi value very small we can say that tan phi is equal to phi mathematically. So here I have taken phi is equal to delta L by H. This is the formula of shear strain. Next we will see some diagrams for types of strains. This is the original volume. This is the stress being applied. And this is the corresponding effect, which is the strain. So if I have a compressive type of stress, I will have change in that dimension. You can see this pattern over here. And you can see the change of pattern in the right diagram. Here if you see, the dots are quite spacious. Since I am compressing the body, this length will be reduced. And you can see the dots come closer. In the second diagram here, when I have tension kind of effect, the dots will further go away from each other because it's tension kind of effect. And the third one, it is shear. So you can see the body has deformed. And you can see an angle, phi, by which the body has deformed. So these are some diagrams which will help in the understanding of that concept. Next, we'll talk about a very important law which is called as Hooke's law. First, let's read the statement. Within elastic limit, Stress is directly proportional to strain, which means if I am applying load, load upon area becomes pressure. When pressure is applied, which means the body is going to resist and show some stress. 
So when a load is applied, I can say a body will show some stress. Within elastic limit, what happens is when the body has not lost its elasticity. In that zone, when you apply stress, the body will get deformed. Say the length will increase. When you remove the load, the stress becomes zero. Obviously, the strain is going to reduce and become zero, which means the body will come back to its original shape and size. This happens in elastic limit. But when you cross the elastic limit, the case will not be so. When you apply load, the body will show some kind of resistance, which will be stress. When there is stress, there will be strain. Since the body has lost its elasticity, that is why the body will not regain its original shape and size. So in that case, we say it is plastic zone. That's where Hooke's law is not applicable. That is why this three words at the start are very, very important for Hooke's law. Within elastic limit, stress is directly proportional to strain. You can see here, sigma is directly proportional to E. If I want to substitute the symbol of proportionality, I will use an equal to sign according to mathematics and I'll write capital E. So capital E can also be written as sigma upon small e. This is just a variation of this formula. This E is called as Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity because it is about the elastic limit. Now, the unit of E can be very much understood from this formula. Small e has no unit because it is a term for strain. Sigma is uh, the symbol which is used for stress. So, we will use this unit of stress over here for capital E, which is Newton per meter square or Newton per mm square or kilonewton per mm square or kilonewton per meter square. Now, we will move to the last topic of this lecture which is elastic constants. First one is Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity. It is defined as the ratio of tensile stress to the tensile strain or compressive stress to the compressive strain of the body and it is denoted by capital E. Mathematically, E can be written as sigma upon small e as we had just seen for Hooke's law and if I talk about tensile effect I will say sigma t upon e t or if there is a compressive load leading to compressive stress and compressive strain so I will say it is sigma c upon e c. The unit of e as we have just seen is newton per meter square, newton per mm square so and so forth. The next term is modulus of rigidity or shear modulus. It is defined as the ratio of shear stress to the shear strain of the body. It is denoted by three symbols, capital C, capital G or capital N. I will be using capital G throughout my lectures. Mathematically, G is written as tau upon ES. Tau is shear stress and ES is shear strain. If you see the unit of G, it is again the same, Newton per meter square, Newton per mm square, or kilonewton per meter square or kilonewton per mm square. The same as that of capital E. Third term is called as bulk or volume modulus of elasticity. It is defined as the ratio of normal stress to the volumetric strain of the body. As you had seen the figure that when there is some compressive load on the body, you saw there was a volumetric change. So that is why there is a specific term when I talk about volumetric strain. There is a particular elastic constant which is attributed to it which is called as bulk modulus. It is denoted by capital K. Mathematically, K is sigma n. Sigma is stress, n stands for normal. Normal means perpendicular which is tensile or compressive type. Upon E B, E is strain and B stands for volumetric. So, capital K is sigma n upon E V. And unit of K is again similar to E and G, which is Newton per meter square or Newton per mm square or kilonewton per meter square or kilonewton per mm square. And there are many more units which can be used. So, this is all about the basics of stress and strain. I hope you have understood the lecture. If you have any doubts, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel.
hit the bell icon for latest updates of my videos. I'll see you in the next session. Thank you. Thank you.